Not since that 12th day of April, back in 1945, when word flashed from Warren Springs, Georgia, that President Roosevelt was dead, have the people of the United States of America been so stunned, stunned and agonized by this electric news from Dallas, Texas, early this afternoon, that the United States has lost our president. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, age 46, shot to death by an assassin's bullet as he rode through the streets of Dallas in a happy motorcade. People walk the streets of the big cities and the narrow sidewalks of the village, all with the same stunned reaction. Is it true? And then a muttered, Oh, my God. The president is dead. Here in New York City, in downtown Manhattan, a man slammed a newspaper down on an office table. He ran out of the room in near hysteria. Can't help but have a few tears. Women and men wept unashamedly in front of New York St. Patrick's Cathedral. Then he fell on their knees and wept. ABC's Stuart Klein has just returned from Grand Central Station here in Manhattan. He talked to some of the people down there at the crossroads of the world. Stu, what was it like? Don, uh, the word I heard most was stunned. There was anger, of course, and some people openly cursed the assassins. But for the most part, the people at Grand Central were just stunned, shocked, just disbelieving. Here is what some of them were saying. I just heard about it. I, um, I heard it at the Westinghouse International office where I just came from. I'm not with Westinghouse, but, um, I, my, I'm almost speechless. I feel that the whole world, not only the United States, has lost one of its greatest leaders. Whether you are a Republican or Democrat, he was an American, and first and foremost, he was an American president. Can I ask your name and hometown? Certainly. Warner Brandis, New York City. Thank you very much. Sir, did you, I'm sure you probably heard the tragic news. I did, yeah. Can I ask your name and home, uh, hometown? Tom Johnson, uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, when and where did you get the tragic news, Mr. Johnson? Over at a place I'm working, filmmakers, Drew Associates. How did you get the news? Just over the radio. Uh, what happened then? Were there many people in your office when the radio announcement came? Yeah. And what happened? Well, uh, they were pretty, um, pretty moved by it. They, uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd agree with what he said. I think just about everybody, whether Republican or Democrat, is uh, going to be pretty hurt by this. The only thing about it is, though, that it seems that the, the thing that did kill him was the sort of extremist, uh, radical right-wing thing that we've been hearing so much about and it and it's it's gotten to the point where people uh, uh, with this sort of extremism just lose all sense of what another person is and they, they're bound to destroy him this is it, that's what killed him thank you very much sir sir did you i'm sure you've heard the tragic news by now can i ask your name and hometown sir albert feinberg new york city when and where did you get the news mr feinberg in my office and uh Someone said over the radio that the president had been shot, and in a little while uh, the news came over that he was dead. What kind of office do you have, sir? I'm a CPA. And what happened then when this news well, broke? Everybody was stunned. Uh, the work uh, ceased immediately, and uh, uh, no one could express themselves. It was something that uh, that uh, was hard to believe under the circumstances. Who else, sir, would you care to comment on what happened today? Well, uh, my reaction, I think, is like everyone else. I was just shattered and stunned by the incident. I first heard about it when I was walking, uh, making a phone call on the party on the other end, said he had a rush from the phone. He just heard a flash that the president had been shot. At that very moment, what was your complete, complete disbelief? I, because uh, it just didn't ring true. I couldn't conceive of it. And uh, it was subsequently confirmed about uh, a few minutes later about the actual shooting. And uh, came over the line uh, around 2.30 that he had died. That's what uh, some of the people at Grand Central Station were saying, Don, here in New York City. Thank you, Stu Klein. Dr. Malcolm Perry, the attendant surgeon at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas, 
Lieutenant President Kennedy. He said when he arrived at the emergency room, he noticed that the president was in critical condition, that he had a wound in the neck and in the head. When asked if the wounds could have been made by two bullets, Dr. Perry said he did not know. An operation was performed to assist the president's breathing. The doctor said that an oxygen machine was used, blood and fluid also administered. An electrocardiograph attached to the body to record the heartbeat. When asked to specify about the wound in the president, Dr. Perry said that the bullet had entered the front of the head. This late word just in from Dallas, Lyndon Johnson has been sworn in as President of the United States. It was just a few minutes ago. The oath administered by a U.S. District Judge, Sarah Hughes. Lyndon Johnson has been sworn in as President of the United States. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. <laughs> 